We're on page 44 in your workbooks. We're going to look at the different types of synovial joints. The different types of joints are determined by the bones at the joints, and this dictates the type of movement that can occur at the joints. The joint we're going to look at is the hinge joint, and this is where two bones join in such a way that movement is only possible in one direction. So we have the knee joint and the elbow joint. It's a bit like the hinges in a door. You can only open the door in one direction, backwards and forwards. It can't go any other way. The ball and socket joint is where a ball-shaped bone, bone end, fits into a socket-shaped bone and you get lots of movement here. For example, the shoulder and the hip joint. The pivot joint is a joint constructed in such a way that rotation only is possible. And it's at the at your neck, the base, the area between your head and your vertebra. It's called the atlas and axis of the neck. The condyloid joint is also known as the ellipsoid joint. It's the joint between your carpals and your radius. These are the carpals here, and there's your radius there, and this is your ulna. And there you can see the condyloid joint well marked in there. The last joint we're going to look at today is the gliding joint. It's where the bone surfaces are small and flat and slide over each other. For example, the scapula and the ribs. The ribs lie underneath the scapula and the scapula just moves back and forth over the ribs. At the bottom of page 44, I want you now to try and complete that table where you fill in the name of the bones at that joint and then the type of joint that it is. For example, the elbow, that is an ulna and humerus bone, and the type of joint is hinge. So you can go ahead and complete that now for homework.